Good morning. It is Wednesday, November 9, 2016. Welcome to CBS This Morning. Donald Trump wins the presidency in one of the greatest upsets in election history. Voters demanding a change cause a political earthquake. Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway will join us with how they pulled it off. Hillary Clinton concedes in private but says nothing to her devastated supporters. She's expected to speak this morning. We look at where she lost the race. The world is reacting to this stunning result. We're in Moscow where Vladimir Putin and the Russian parliament are applauding Donald Trump's victory. But we begin this morning with a look at today's eye-opener, your world in 90 seconds. I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. A historic night as Donald Trump is elected president of the United States. For all of the talk about Donald Trump not accepting the outcome of this election, Hillary Clinton has not delivered a concession speech. She's done an amazing job, and she has not done yet. The pollsters are dead wrong. They, their predictions weren't worth the paper that they were printed on. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president. Outside of the Civil War, World War II, and including 9-11, this may be the most cataclysmic event the country's ever seen. I take some hope in his speech that he wants to build bridges and that he wants us all to come together. I think that's a really good way to start in this country. This is historic. But I don't think we can say right now where this goes from here. It could be a wild ride on Wall Street. Uncertainty surrounding a Trump presidency is shocking markets. Thousands of Hillary Clinton supporters left with tears in their eyes. They are shocked beyond measure, these folks. All that. Look on the bright side. Uh, you know that lie we tell kids? You could be president? It's true now. <laughs> Literally anyone can be president. And all that matters. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. I believe the American people made a choice that they believe will help their lives, and everybody is entitled to make that decision, whether or not you agree with them. On CBS This Morning. Let's face it, this has been an exhausting, stressful, and sometimes downright weird election for all of us. But here's what I want everybody to know. No matter what happens, the sun will rise in the morning, and America will still be the greatest nation on earth. This morning's eye-opener is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome to CBS This Morning. The 2016 election ended with a thunderclap that is echoing around the world. Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. We estimate that the president-elect will get at least 289 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton, the favored before yesterday's vote, has just 218. We're still unable to call a winner in three states, Minnesota, Michigan, and New Hampshire. Right now, Hillary Clinton is actually leading in the popular vote by a slim margin. The winner was not decided until close to 3 a.m. Eastern time. We have yet to see Hillary Clinton since she called Trump to concede. Nancy Cordes is waiting for Clinton to appear. Here this morning, but first, let's go to Major Garrett at the Trump Tower in Manhattan. He was up late too. Major, good morning. Good morning. The night began gloomily for Donald Trump, his advisors, and a somber crowd at his Midtown Manhattan campaign headquarters. Early returns and exit polls were discouraging, but despair soon gave way to joy as Trump's unshakable belief in voter turnout that would defy expectations and shatter all predictions materialized. And no matter how improbably the presidency was Trump's. The president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. With characteristic flair and his family and campaign advisors in tow, Donald Trump began the transition from political phenomenon to commander-in-chief. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. Saluting the vanquished Democratic nominee he once threatened to jail during an historically bitter campaign. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time, and we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. 
With votes still being counted, Trump offered soothing words to the more than 58 million Americans who voted against him, vowing to pursue reconciliation. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. Trump said it was time for the country to dream big, and he promised massive investments in new infrastructure and a push to clean up America's inner cities. America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. As he has throughout the campaign, Trump said his administration would soften the blows of globalization with tougher policies on trade and immigration. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. Living a history he uniquely saw as his political destiny, Trump said he would now focus on the fight ahead. While the campaign is over, our work on this movement is now really just beginning. Twitter, of course, played a prominent role in Donald Trump's pursuit of the American presidency. And we have this morning the first tweet from President-elect Trump. It reads as follows. Such a beautiful and important evening. The forgotten man and woman will never be forgotten again. We will all come together as never before. Nora. All right, Major Garrett, thank you so much. Hillary Clinton did not speak to supporters in New York last night. Campaign Chairman John Podesta addressed the stunned crowd as her victory party turned into a vigil. They're still counting votes, and every vote should count. Several states are too close to call, so we're not going to have anything more to say tonight. We are so proud of her. She's done an amazing job, and she is not done yet. So thank you for being with her. But within the hour after saying that, Hillary Clinton called Donald Trump to concede, and Clinton spent the night at the Peninsula Hotel in Manhattan. Nancy Cordes is there right now. Nancy, good morning. Good morning, Nora. Clinton gave no public speech, put out no public statement herself, leaving many of her supporters wondering what she thinks of this turn of events. Her campaign says she will speak today, but they have not given us a time or a place. The mood at that election party last night was astounding, going from uh, upset uh, at the end, where at first they had been jubilant. Uh, they were crying. They were shell-shocked. They were hugging each other for support as the night went on. On. This campaign had been so sure of victory based on its data that at 8 p.m. they told us she was putting the finishing touches on one of the two speeches they had prepared for her, a sign they all believed that she had won and might even be declaring victory on the early side. Their internal polling had showed her leading in the states that they considered her surest path to victory, holding Michigan, then winning Nevada, Colorado, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. But turnout ended up being soft in some key urban areas and suddenly Pennsylvania where she had led throughout the entire election was a nail biter. Michigan a nail biter. Wisconsin a state that aides freely admit wasn't even on their radar screen a nail biter. Clinton had not visited that state in seven months. President Obama won that state by seven points back in 2012. This all shows you why they thought a state like that might be a sure thing. Uh, this is a ground game operation that was supposed to be second to none. They spared no expense on it. And so the question this morning is, what happened? Thanks, Nancy. Joining us now from Trump Towers, Donald Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway. Good morning and congratulations. Oh, good morning, Charlie, and thank you for that. We're really excited here. So tell us about the conversation between uh, Secretary Clinton and Donald Trump. It was a very gracious conversation about 2.30 a.m. or so, uh, and we had, we had already gone over to the Hilton to meet our supporters. We had been watching the returns throughout the night here at Trump Tower, and uh, after we made our way there, our plan was really just to wait and see if the rest of the states and the presidency had been called, and in the meantime, my phone rang, and I handed it to Mr. Trump, and he and Secretary Clinton had a uh, brief but very gracious, very warm conversation. He commended.